Hi, this episode is focused on SVG markers that can be modified and used in QGIS. So, first of all, there are some uh, differences between uh, markers in SVG format and in QGIS. Uh, and it has to do with how colors and uh, outlines are handled. So, in SVG, we have um, fills with opacity. Those uh, parameters control the fill in each of the vector objects in the in the file then we have stroke and that is the stroke uh, outline color stroke width and stroke opacity and those three control uh, the outlines for the shapes in the svg format uh, qgis have uh, equivalent parameters for uh, controlling markers and uh, shapes uh, for as fill and fill opacity and it has outline for the color and outline width and outline opacity so when we are talking about stroke it is svg and outline it's in QGIS uh, and in the svg format we can override the default or the decided properties for these parameters with a parameter uh, so we can assign the fill in the SVG the parameter fill from uh, QGIS uh, and that works great for simple vector shapes like uh, this uh, ellipse uh, but if we have um, more complex SVGs, for instance, with more than one uh, shape, like this. We can only control the fill from QGIS uh, once. So we can assign the QGIS fill color to both of these uh, shapes, but we can't assign a fill color to uh, a different fill color in QGIS. Uh, however, we can assign two colors in QGIS for the fill and for the outline. So technically we could use the fill for the ellipse as the fill in QGIS and the fill for the rectangle as the outline color. And that way we can control two fill colors in the SVG marker. So that is what I'm going to play with um, in this uh, episode and show you how you can do it yourself. So I'm going to try and uh, create a match in Inkscape and it will have a flame that I want to control with the fill color in QGIS. It will have a flame core or a center that will be a brighter version of this flame color. It will have a match head. It will have a stick. And the stick I want to control with the outline color. And the stick will also have a highlight that is a, a brighter version of the stick color. And I will also add an outline uh, to the stick uh, that will be controlled uh, at least in some way. So let's switch to uh, Inkscape. So Inkscape is a free and open source vector program and you could probably do this in uh, Illustrator as well. Um, I like to use Inkscape, so that is what I'm going to use. Uh, and if you want to be good at Inkscape, it, it can be 
a bit confusing from time to time, but there are plenty of good, really good tutorials on uh, YouTube. Uh, Logos by Nick is uh, one that I uh, really like. So I will try to keep this simple, but if you don't completely understand what I'm doing, then you probably need to uh, look into some tutorials about Inkscape. Because this is not a tutorial about, tutorial about Inkscape. So first of all, uh, we navigate much the same as in QGIS. Pan by pressing the control L, uh, zoom wheel on the mouse. And we can zoom in and out by holding control, the control button down. If we just scroll the wheel, we pan. And with shift and scroll, we pan uh, horizontally. But that's not important. So first of all, uh, I will start by creating the stick. And I use the rectangle tool for that. And let's make it uh, red. So like that. And right now it has rounded corners. So I need to change the handles here like that. Then I will switch to the select and transform tool. I can do that by uh, pressing S on the keyboard. So that is probably okay for a matchstick. Uh, I will also want to check my outline. So down here we have a colors and you can use the scroll wheel to uh, see the presets. But you also have um, fill and stroke panel. And you can access that with a button up here. Uh, so first of all, let's change the fill to something more match stick like. That's good enough. And the stroke should be black. And the width should be a bit bigger. That looks okay. Uh, I want the stroke to be underneath the fill. So for that I can look here. Stroke fill markers. That will put the fill underneath. Like that. Uh, now I want to create the highlight. So I duplicate this. And can probably do that through the menu, but I use Control D to duplicate. Let's put that in a different color, make it a bit smaller, remove the outline, and the fill should be white with about 40% opacity. Like that. That's a good enough for a stick. Before I move on, I want to name this rectangle the stick, not the highlight, the stick rectangle. And I do that by looking at the object properties. So instead of this generic rect830, I will call this stick. Uh, and important to press enter here to confirm that it's uh, edited otherwise it will be lost so now I can see it it's stuck so the match head another rectangle should be black and this should be a bit rounded like that and right now it's a rectangle but I want to change that to uh, more more uh, manageable or pliable form so 
let's change that object to a path uh, and that will remove the possibility to uh, modify it as a rectangle so now it's more a vector shape so I move these two corner vertices in a bit so I get uh, a different shape for this the color should be black as I mentioned but it should not have any opacity so go to fill and stroke and make it fully opaque oh, that's a good enough match and I will call this with the uh, object properties head don't forget enter and now for the flame I will use the Bezier pen. Bezier pen. And I will use the B spline method for the pen. The default is just a regular Bezier, but I will use B spline. So starting, uh, oh, turn off the snapping. Starting uh, about here, I will. draw a shape like this and uh, in the top here I don't want it to be a Bezier curve so I hold down shift when I press the last uh, vertex and then I release shift and I can continue with my shape and I click on the first vertex to close it uh, Oh, I can move it around a bit. Yeah, that it will probably do. Not a perfect shape, but anyway. Uh, a yellow fill. Remove the outline. And now I want to create the the core of the flame so I use a duplicate command control D make it red and then I want to make it smaller and then there's a inset command uh, with uh, control left parenthesis so I press that repeatedly to get it a smaller size eh, like that mark them both put them underneath the flame and this should not be uh, an opaque color it should be white with opacity maybe 50 let's try different colors so when I later change the flame color in QGIS the core color will adapt to it like this so as a default let's leave it at that and the flame I want to rename that as well object properties call it flame don't forget enter and then I have one shape here called flame I have the flame core I don't care about changing the name for that I have the match head and that should be black with no outline I have the match stick named stick I have the stick highlight and I have an outline for my match stick and it's beneath everything so that is good enough uh, as a match uh, right now the SVG extent is this page size 
So to resize that, we can go to the document properties. And that is a link up here. And in that we have uh, this resize page to content drop down. And uh, here's a button that we can press to resize it. There's also a keyboard shortcut, Control Shift R. So now the extent of the SVG is uh, exactly the shape of uh, my graphics, or my object. And now I see one potential problem, and that is the extent ends very close to the stick. So if I make the outline wider, let's see, where do we have it? Uh, fill and stroke. Stroke width. Let's increase that a lot. Like that. You see, it sticks down beneath the page. So I will redo the page size with a larger uh, outline. So Control Shift R, like that, and then I can make the stroke smaller again. One, like that. That will leave me room for using this. That is one way to do this. Uh, another way, and I will probably show that instead. So resize it again. Now it will be clipped. Uh, and never mind, forget everything I said. Okay, that completes my marker. So let's save it as a match. Match. And we can uh, leave Inkscape. To modify the SVG so it can be used in QGIS, we need to add the parameters that I started with. So I need to open it, the SVG in a text editor. In the SVG file there are a lot of code uh, and you can skip that for the most part. So it has uh, information about the software that were used to create it and uh, those are only specific to Inkscape in this case. So if you open this in uh, uh, Illustrator, uh, Illustrator will just ignore this. And then we have uh, more information and then we have the metadata and that depends on the settings in your software. Uh, in this case, it has my name as a creator and it has a, a license for the graphic. Um, I can skip that as well. And then we come to the path uh, for, in this case, the flame. And there's a lot of coordinates uh, in, in a lot of ways. And you also get a style uh, parameter. And this is the default colors and uh, style parameters that were set inside Inkscape. We will override that with our own parameters. Uh, we have the flame and there's another path with a random number. Now we have a rectangle, that is the stick. And we have a path that is the head. So now we need to modify the flame and the stick. So let's start with the flame. So look for the flame path and uh, 
directly after the path just insert a row and I want to control the fill color so fill equals param fill like that that takes the fill parameter from QGIS and applies it to the fill of this path and I also want to control the opacity of the fill so opacity param fill opacity like that now I can control the fill for the flame by the fill color in QGIS let's see where is the stick here we go the stick and that's a rectangle so let's add a fill for the stick and that should also be a param but it should not be the fill it should be the outline so the QGIS outline color should be applied to the fill color in the SVG and the opacity for the stick fill should be param outline opacity and I also want to control the outline for the stick so that is called stroke but I can't control the stroke color because that is uh, uh, used for the fill color so I can only control the width and that should be param outline width and I can control the outline color uh, outline opacity color outline opacity and that's stroke opacity param outline opacity like that and the rest I just ignore because uh, I don't want to change the colors or anything else in the file so I leave the default ones there so just save and let's open QGIS so here I have a point layer with simple markers let's change that to SVG markers and uh, get the match SVG make it bigger let's magnify it so we can see it clearly so here I have the by QGIS assigned colors so let's make the flame which is the fill color yellow and the stick brownish like that outline no stroke or yeah the opacity here it doesn't work uh, as intended uh, because it will also affect the fill uh, color so it will not affect the outline color so uh, we can forget about the uh, outline opacity so let me just change that so the rectangle stroke opacity can remove that that was unnecessary save it jump back and I need to re open the SVG oops there we go like that
So the opacity now only should control the fill, but it doesn't. So depending on your settings, the effect these colors have will uh, vary. So it will in the end be a combination of uh, uh, QG settings and uh, Inkscape settings. But this way you can control the flame, color and opacity. And you can control the stick color. And opacity. Uh, but when we combine that with the stroke, uh, there will be some issues because they are connected. So for the fill, uh, if you can, don't use opacity. And now we see the outline here, it's clipped. Can you see that? The outline for the stick is clipped at the bottom of the uh, shape for the stick and that is because the SVG page is defined to end here. Uh, we can get around that inside QGIS and that is by rotating it, rotate it by a very small amount like that. You see? Now suddenly the size of the page for the SVG is ignored. But if we leave it at zero rotation, it will be clipped. I'll just keep it at a very small outline. When you work with SVGs, there's a huge uh, benefit to working with SVGs. Uh, and that is, you can share your style really easily. So instead of just referring to an SVG file, you can use the embed file function. So by embedding the SVG, it will be included in the style file. So, if I want to share this uh, match, I can just save the symbol. I'm sorry, you can't see the dialog. I'm just typing in match. Like that. Uh, and now it is in my style manager. So I created it in a test tag with a test tag so yeah here I have my match and now I can export items I can select by group test and it's also let's see if match there selected and I can export it to a match XML file And this XML file can be sent or shared with anyone. And all they need to do in return is to import the items. Um, I have created a lot of styles recently. And I put them on GitHub. And I will leave a link to a collection of styles uh, there. And uh, that URL, you can just copy it. And then in uh, QGIS, in the style manager, you go to import. And then instead of file, you select URL and you just paste the URL to, uh, from the description. Click fetch items. You get a lot of styles. You can select them all or individually and import. 
I already have them all, but let's import them. And then you get a few more uh, styles that I've created recently. So hopefully uh, that will inspire you to create SVG styles. Uh, and uh, the styles, if you download my styles, a lot of them are actually based on SV embedded SVGs. So for instance, if we take uh, random, let's see, random, I have a, turn the matches off, an ink style. Let's bring it to 100%. Uh, pen, pencil, sharpie, moss. And uh, all of these are, not all of them, but uh, MOSS, for instance, is an SVG marker line with an embedded SVG file. And I also have a few other styles. And uh, in some cases, most of them, they are also embedded SVGs. Uh, in some cases, they are just simple markers, but in many cases, they are embedded SVGs. So hopefully you have learned uh, something about SVGs and how you can incorporate them into uh, QGIS. And it's uh, a really a great way to get complete freedom when it comes to symbology in QGIS. See you next time.